Hello beautiful people, I've got another exciting video for you today. This one is part of a challenge hosted by Cory from Desert DIY. I've got her link in my description, so please check her out. She's an amazing creator and you'll find lots of interesting content. People say that fast food is not good for you, but how do you explain finding this little gem on my way to KFC, huh? So <laughs> this one is terribly damaged and when I saw it, I just thought I had to have it. So I stopped and I just put it in my car and here I am. As you can see, there's a lovely paint job that someone did to this pool dresser. And I'm going to start by removing the paint with a scraper. Before I go any farther, I just wanted to say thank you guys for all the love that I'm getting from you. For all of you who buy me coffees through Buy Me Coffee and for all the gifts that I get from Amazon. And also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I have some merch. So I have a really cool clothing and check it out. There is a link on my channel. Hope you enjoy it. So as I said, I started by removing the paint with a scraper and there was a lot of scraping. Fortunately, the varnish was old and it wasn't too difficult to take it off. Then I removed the hardware using my handy screwdriver and those handles were actually glued to the drawers so I had to use a chisel to get them off. Before you guys ask, this screwdriver is sold at Lidl but you can also find it on eBay. At this point I realized that the drawers were actually made from solid mahogany, which was a very pleasant surprise because I knew that I would be able to do a lot with that. Not sure if you guys can see that, but the bottom stretcher is actually twisted and bowed, so you will see me later on what I did to fix it. I decided to remove the skirting just to update the look and also use the wood from the skirting for something else. I used the longer pieces of the skirting to strengthen the dresser underneath and to have something to attach the legs to eventually. I cut them to size and I used a pocket hole jig to drill holes. If you've never used a pocket hole jig, there are actually plenty on the market and this is a pretty easy 
way to connect two pieces together or to attach a piece to something else while hiding the holes. One of the sides on the drawer was loose, so I used some wood glue and clamps to clamp it together and I left it overnight to dry. These little clamps allow you to clamp something at the right angle. If you're wondering why there are so many clamps, wait till the end to see the bloopers. I use some oxalic acid to remove stains and to clean up the wood. Oxalic acid needs to be rinsed off with water. I used all sorts of tools to remove little bits of paint from hard to reach places. I also used oxalic acid to try and get rid of some of the stains that were inside of drawers. I sanded the drawers and as you can see there were lots of holes and dings and paint was stuck everywhere so it did take a while to get rid of it. Now you can see me attaching those pieces of wood that I cut before to strengthen the base of the dresser and using some glue for extra reinforcement. To make it easy I just use some clamps to correctly position that piece of wood and put some screws through it. Because I found this dresser on the side of the road, I didn't expect it to be perfect. But when I removed the paint, the sides turned out to be actually really damaged. And because there was so much veneer missing, lots of holes, and someone tried to sand it previously and they sanded through the veneer, 
So I decided after lots of thinking that it was probably too expensive and just not worth repairing the sides and I patched the holes and decided to paint it. I will likely keep this piece for myself so I'm very happy with the choice but possibly in the future if I do get my hands on a large piece of mahogany veneer I might replace it. What I'm pointing at right now is a piece of solid wood and plywood covered with veneer. So I actually thought that it would be a good idea to use it to my advantage. I didn't want to paint that piece of solid wood, so I taped off all the areas that I didn't want the paint to get on and I used a spray putty to even out the surface and get it ready for the paint. I also used some wood filler to cover some of the holes because the hardware that I was going to use was different size from the original one. I sanded the back and I used some liquid sander that I had left over from my previous project to clean the drawers inside. When I was done cleaning, I used my table saw and the remaining pieces of the skirting to make some custom pieces of trim that would match the ones already existing on the top of the dresser. I used my palm router and the rounding bit to create the shape on the trim that I wanted. Because those trim pieces were very thin, I created the shape first and then I cut it off to the size exactly as I needed. And I repeated the process several times until I had enough pieces. I gave them light sanding and I used some glue and my nail gun to attach them in place. I didn't want the nails to show, so I used some wood filler to cover them up. When the spray putty was dry, I used 240 grit sandpaper, gave it a light sanding and got it ready for the paint. I used my sander to smooth out the wood filler that I used on the drawer front and I also sanded inside the drawers as I wasn't happy with how they looked. Now you can see me preparing the dresser for painting. I used Rusolium charcoal paint. This is black paint. It's chalk paint. It's really easy to apply. I added some water to dilute it 
and I applied two coats and two coats of satin clear coat. Because there were some scratches inside the drawers, I used Restore a Finish just to make them look better and as you can see the difference is striking. Because it was a very cold that day and the paint wasn't drying at all, I used my heat gun to speed up the process. When I was done painting, I used natural beeswax on the insides of the drawers, but also on the sides and the bottoms. I also waxed the drawer fronts and as you can see with a little bit of natural beeswax that mahogany wood comes to life. I used a very gentle sanding sponge between two coats of clear coat. And you can see me going back and forth between different things, but this is exactly how I did it. So you have an idea how this works in real life. A while ago, I got lucky and I purchased a bag of different mid-century modern legs. I think there were eight or nine sets in the bag for only 80 pounds and I decided to use one of these sets for this project. I used a steel wire brush to clean up the mounting plates and a brass wire brush to clean the brass portion of the legs and then I put them in my drill and I used some sandpaper to remove the paint from the wooden portion of the legs. When the bottom was waxed, I drilled some pilot holes and I attached the mounting plates and the legs to the bottom of the dresser. When you're removing paint with the method that I showed you a minute ago, it will leave some marks because you're going against the grain. So with some hand sanding, you can easily get rid of those marks. Now I'm polishing the brass bits with Barkeeper's Friend, but unfortunately this was only plated, it was not real brass, so I decided to paint it with brass paint. And I use my heat gun to speed up the process. Now you can see me applying wax to the top of the dresser with fine steel wool.
And now you can see that the bottom drawer will not close because the bottom stretcher is twisted and bowed. So I decided to fix it with a piece of oak, some screws and glue. I wiped off the glue that squeezed out and I used a hand plane to make it flush with the stretcher. And then I used my hardwood jig to attach the handles. We are getting close to the end of this video and I would like to ask you guys to subscribe if you enjoyed it. This helps me a lot and I will really appreciate it. And then I use my palm router with a carving bit and a guiding fence to deepen the groove that was between the piece of hardwood and the plywood on the side of the dresser. This way I was able to create an inlay with some super glue and a piece of brass. Purposely I didn't make it flush with the side because I wanted it to be visible from the front.